Have you wanted to learn one of Jacob's songs but don't want to use the altered tuning? You're not alone. I've been teaching other tutorials showing how to play Jacob's songs like Little Blue, Summer Rain, uh, Never Gonna Be Alone, Witness Me in his altered tunings. But this video is gonna cut through all of that so you don't have to retune your guitar, you don't have to use five strings, you don't have to learn new chord shapes. We're just gonna stick with standard tuning shapes, shapes that you already probably know. And another great thing about learning this song is that once you learn the first three chords, you've got all that you need to know to play the intro, all the verses, and all the choruses. Now the tricky spot is the bridge in the modulation, which involves moving the capo one fret. But we're gonna break that down to find an easier way to do it and keep the shapes familiar. So let's hear those three chords in context. I'm gonna play the intro, and you're gonna notice the little hammer on and the kind of finger picking pattern that mimics what he's doing. And then we'll break that down. So let's take a look at what those three chords are. The first one is F add nine. Now we're just using the F on the upper four strings, the top four strings. We're not doing a full bar because one, we want our finger, our pinky available to play that third fret on the first string. Because this note, as well as the note on the second string are the notes of his two open strings when he's in the altered tuning. So they ring over the top of many of the chords. So this gives us the signature sound of the tuning without having to actually retune. So we have F add nine, and then we leave our pinky where it is and we play a G, and then an A minor seven, with that pinky still on that third fret. Okay, so that finger picking pattern. Now, on that F, we have a pretty signature sound that he does in the tuning, and we're able to replicate it without overcomplicating what we're doing here. And for any of these things that are more technical for you, on the chart, you can always just follow the letter name of the chord and play that and skip all the extensions or inversions, which I'll be breaking down as we get there. I'm trying to make this really accessible no matter what level you are at. So you can take or leave some of the a little additive things that try to copy what he's doing. If you're enjoying getting this kind of detailed information, I've got a whole Patreon community that is dedicated to showing and sharing more Jacob Collier guitar secrets. So please come join us over there if you wanna get even more information about how Jacob plays guitar and more resources to learn more of his signature language and vocabulary on guitar, whether it's in the altered tuning or how we can apply it to standard tuning as well. So the finger picking pattern slowed down sounds like this. So let's just take a look at that F add nine first. Now, if we have to think of the rhythm, the pattern is one and a two and three and four and. Note by note, one is on the fourth string, then and a is on the third string with a hammer on, open to two, then the second string, then the first string, and then we do a little alternating pattern between fourth, second, fourth, third. Next we go to that G chord and we kind of arpeggiate the chord a little bit, go with an up down motion. So sixth string, fourth string, I'm plucking the third and second string there, back to the fourth string. Now this isn't, you know, brain surgery. We're not trying to be overly precise, but there is kind of this cascading up and down sound to it. And then going to that last A minor chord and ending that phrase on that first string with our pinky on the third fret is 
kind of signature the way that he strums it because remember that that top note is the open string that he's got in his altered tuning and that pattern basically repeats throughout the whole song granted sometimes he mixes it up with strumming but that is kind of like the signature sound that he gets from those open droning strings in the altered tuning so it's a nice thing to be able to add in standard and now that we have that we can play the entire verse that starts with Lizzie and goes on into Jacob's verse. And let's just take a quick listen to what that sounds like. There's a patch of sunlight in my room a carpet where I held you for a moment in June There's something so sweet about it Never been so unguarded made me fall for you and from there he goes into the chorus and it's the same chords now one option that we do have to mimic what he does when he plays this live on acoustic guitar is the last bar of the chorus he it's the same chords but he changes the voicing a little bit by doing an inversion now do we have to do the inversion does it make it more complicated no you don't have to do the inversion but it's a good thing to learn. So I'm gonna demonstrate what it is. I'm gonna play the chorus through and then we'll take a look at that last line to see what is different about it. Take me back to the window. Take me back to the door. You'll be right where I left you, sitting on the floor. Now I'm never gonna be alone. Take me back to the window, take me back to the door You'll be right where I left you, sitting on the floor I'm never gonna be alone So the last line, probably noticed it's a little more strummy I'm doing an inversion, but it's still basically an F chord and a G chord and instead of doing an A minor chord, it is a C chord with an E in the bass, or C in first inversion. I'm gonna demonstrate it what it is. But remember, you can just play F, G, and C. You could probably even play F, G, and A minor if you just wanna keep it the same. So to play the inversion of F over C, which is F in second inversion, just meaning the, it's putting the fifth of the, of the chord, or the C, in the bass. So we went from our four string F, we have the F add nine, but instead of doing that, we're moving our ring finger to the third fret of the fifth string to be on the C, and our pinky on the third fret of the D string to be F. That's F over C. And he's just basically doing downstrokes on eighth notes. One and two and three and four and. And instead of playing just a regular G chord, which you can do if you want, we're doing G over D, or G in second inversion, which this looks like an F bar chord, but not having to be a bar. And G over D is just sliding it up two frets. Because here we have a D in the bass, and then G, B, D, G. So that's our F over C. We can slide up to that G over D. And instead of going to an A minor, we're going to C over E, which C chord is the relative major to the A minor chord, so there's really only one difference of, of in terms of the notes in the chord. All we have to do is take our ring finger that's on the fifth string, slide it up to the seventh fret, that's our E note, and then our index finger rests on the next three strings. Sounds like that. If you'll notice that these top three strings look like the C power chord. It's those three strings, but we're putting the third of that chord in that. And Jacob does a lot of this, a lot of inversions in that alter tuning, which is why the alter tuning is so versatile. But some of these voicings are still super accessible in standard tuning. And after that, he just does those last two bars of the F, G, and A minor again, just like it was before. <laughs> Now from there, we go right into the instrumental, which is the same chords again. 
So we haven't had to change, and we've had to change one chord, that C over E. It's the only thing we've had to do differently throughout this entire song. Now, how long the instrumental section is, is totally up to you. Depends on if you've got an instrumentalist to take that lead, whether they're doing John Mayer solo or anything else. Now, we're coming up to the bridge. Now, so this is where it requires a little bit of a mechanical move, but the chord shapes that we're gonna be able to play are still familiar shapes. Now, you may have noticed that where I have a capo on here, but it's not actually on a fret. This is kind of the trick to this song because in Jacob's tuning in this song, D-A-E-A-E, -E, and in my tutorial, because we have six strings, I teach it in D-A-E-F sharp A-E because Jacob basically doesn't have that third string. The D tuning capoed up on the third fret makes that first chord an F. So here we are playing this barred version of F because instead of us capoing up and saying, well, I could capo up and play an E and it would still be in the same shape and I don't have to do that bar chord. But then we have to play an F sharp bar chord and a G sharp minor chord. So not as convenient. The way that he does this modulation after the bridge, uh, when he plays it acoustically, he doesn't move the capo for the bridge, but the tuning gives him the flexibility to play in a different key or to modulate for that section. Then he moves the capo to continue on with the verse progression to the end of the song. But for the sake of us being able to play easier shapes, we're actually gonna move the capo at a different time than Jacob does. And because we are starting in F and we have to move the capo up one fret, I can't put it, hide it over here. I've got the capo basically mounted right on top of the nut. So it's not actually touching the strings, but it's here and available to me so that I can move it up to the first fret. Before we get to the bridge, there is one more essential chord and two if you're brave and want to add one more signature Jacob sounding chord that helps set up the modulation to the bridge. So you'll notice on the chart, we've got that F add nine to G to A minor, repeated twice. And then the last line of that instrumental does those F over C inversion, G over D inversion, and the C over E inversion that we did at the end of the chorus. So that is the same. But then we play a D minor seven. Now, some of you might say, oh, the D minor seven is down here, or here's a D minor, here's a D minor seven. But instead of doing the open position D minor seven, we're gonna do the barred version. And the reason is, is that we need to be covering all the strings so that we can move the capo and not have the moving of the capo disrupt any open strings that are ringing, which would be the case with the open D string. So when we're already gonna be up in that region of the guitar because we've done that F over C to the G over D to that C over E, which we've already covered. And the D minor is right there. So that's the chord that we're gonna play for one bar. Back to that C over E. And that could be all that you need to do. However, if you want to add one more signature Jacob-ism, Jacob, what else can you call it? You know, a signature thing he uses so often, meaning any number of chords that he uses so often to surprise us and take us to the next place. It's gonna go from that C over E to C sharp diminished over E. So without don't let the name scare you. We're leaving our fingers exactly where they are, except our middle finger is gonna fret one fret up on that third string. So it's gonna go from the fifth fret to the sixth fret with our, with our middle finger. And that chord is what sets us up for the first chord of the bridge. But before we get there, Jacob, in the bridge doesn't move the capo. He's able to get those voice scenes without moving the capo when he's in his altered tuning. And we technically can get the same voicings as well, but they're more of the inversions and more maybe less familiar shapes. So I discovered that instead of doing it that way and moving the capo when he does at the end of the bridge, we're gonna move the capo 
before we get to the bridge. And it's going to be on that D minor 7 chord. So I'm going to play it for you so you can hear it, and then we'll take a look at how we do it. Now remember, this is the end of the instrumental. Because we're going to this G chord, but we've moved the capo up one fret. So don't get scared. Let's take a look at it. Let's break it down. So again, we've already done this. D minor 7 chord, we're going to let it ring. It's there for an entire bar, four beats, not a lot of time, but we have, it gives us a little flexibility because we can strum it once. So, looks tricky, but it doesn't have to be. Now, the real trick to moving the capo in this way on this song, it's not the way that Jacob moves. And I've mentioned this on my other video. Jacob when he moves his capo, he's fretting a chord with his left hand and then he hits that diminished chord and then he releases his left hand to reach down and move it. Granted, he's in a different tuning and he's up on the third fret moving it to the fourth fret. But he releases the chord to move it with this hand while this hand is just waiting. So I suggest playing that D minor 7 chord. We're not going to have to take our finger off and have any sort of disruption in the groove or the tempo is that we can hit that chord, reach over, and the trick is because we have to squeeze and move this without releasing the chord, have your have your kind of your bicep resting in this part in the waist of the guitar that kind of holds the guitar steady enough so that you can reach the capo and move that and then we come right back and voila, we are set up to go to a G chord instead of what would have had to be an A flat over C chord. So unfamiliar shape. So to avoid that, we are modulating the capo first so that we can get to more familiar shapes again. So now let's take a look at what that bridge sounds like. The chords that we're going to play hopefully are all familiar to you. It's a G. A D over F sharp, which you probably know this one. This is an inversion. This is D in first inversion because F sharp is the third of the chord of D. So we're just putting the third of the chord in the bass and then going to an E major chord. Because that E major shape, because we've moved the capo, we're on the first fret. So it's still an F chord, right? There's an F chord we've moved the capo up so now we play an E shape. So instead of playing foreign new shapes for this bridge, we get to play G, D over F sharp, and E major. And then lastly would be B. Now and this is going to be a bar chord, which you may not be a fan of it, but you only have to do this B once. And if you want it to have a little more Jacob-ness to it, if that can be a word, you can do it in an inversion simply by barring across to the F sharp in the bass, which would be B in second inversion. F sharp is the fifth of the chord of B. And then from there, we do the same progression again. G to D over F sharp to E major. And to now set us up for the modulation to the new key of the verse, this is where he would have to move the capo. And usually he's playing with Lizzie or Emily, somebody else who's playing the other guitar part to give him the time to move the capo. But now when he plays it solo, he doesn't have that other guitar to do it. So that's why he has to move his hand off the, the chord, move the capo, and then start up on the main verse riff again. Because we've already moved it, we just need to play the two passing chords. And it's a B7. And I'm suggesting just playing the lowest three notes because to go from B7, the next chord is C7. You'd have to... The voicing, voice leading is a little weird, so I just suggest to go, and it happens pretty fast, so just B7. 
slide it up a half step to play C7. And then from there, we're going back to that F add nine shape. So let's hear the whole thing in context, coming out of the instrumental with our capo still on the nut, not on the first fret, finishing up the instrumental, moving the capo, and playing and singing the bridge. And I know so much I want to say And there we are, back to that F add 9 to G to A minor, all the way to the end. So you're going to have to spend most of your time learning how to come out of that instrumental, move the capo, but then we get to play the G, D over F sharp, and E major, instead of more complicated shapes in that section, and then to come out of and have less than a beat to move the capo. So I think it's a lot easier for two reasons, more time and easier shapes. And that final chorus ends in a similar way as the first chorus does with those barred versions, which you can do, or you can skip and just continue the same progression as we were doing before. So let's just hear it all in context. But I'll always find my way back here to you. Take me back to the window. Take me back to the door. You'll be right where I left you, sitting on the floor. Now I'm never gonna be alone. Take me back to the window, take me back to the door. You'll be right where I left you, sitting on the floor. Patch of sunlight in my room on the carpet where I held you for a moment. And there we go. Standard tuning, probably shapes that you have already played before, a couple new ones that C over E and that C sharp diminished. But remember, it was only one fret difference. So it's good to stretch our vocabulary, especially if we want to be able to play Jacob Collier songs. And I think this is a great place to start because we're not modulating all over the place. Got to move that capo. But, you know, that's why we love Jacob, right? Because he does things to surprise us. And if we want to be able to do it, we're going to have to work just a little bit harder. And don't forget to check out my Jacob Collier guitar tutorial playlist where I've got all the songs that I've done to date, as well as where I will put any other future tutorials on songs that he does on acoustic guitar, usually based on the uh, ultra tuning versions. But I'm going to start to do more and more of these uh, standard tuning ones as well for those of you who don't want to mess with your guitar. And for all of those songs, I've created licensed transcriptions, sheet music featuring tablature, chord charts, and study notes to give you some of these tips that you can find at this link here. It'll take you through my website and my store that I've got all those transcriptions and videos available. We'll see you next time.